Hi everyone. So today we are going to uh, cover some topics about the image and video captioning, uh, which is the lecture 18. So uh, this is relatively short um, sex, uh, lecture compared to others. So we're going to spend like 40 or 45 minutes to cover um, the image video captioning. Uh, actually, this is a part uh, of the last part of the multimodal learning uh, roadmap. So uh, let's quickly recall that we have um, learned about the transformers, uh, word embeddings in transformer and uh, the BART model, and the transformer-based uh, image video classification models such as VIT or VIVIT or uh, the timesformer, which is uh, uh, recent models. And uh, then we studied image text models and video text models, which is basically the multimodal representation learning for uh, the multimodality within the video or images. And now we are going to discuss some slightly different topic, slightly different task, uh, which is image video captioning. So in this lecture, um, yeah, we are going to show four uh, interesting ideas of uh, this task. And uh, okay, let's start with the definition of the task first. So uh, we are given an image or a video like this, and the task is generating a natural language description of what's happening inside the picture or the video. For example, in this one, a construction worker in orange uh, safety vest is working on the road, which is uh, exactly describing this picture. Or two young girls uh, are playing with a Lego toy. Interestingly, uh, actually, this is not a young girl, but probably her mom. But anyway, it's, sometimes there are some uh, errors like this. Uh, some, uh, yeah, it's in the caption, so it's it's possible, but uh, basically overall, it's not very uh, incorrect, uh, except for that part. Anyway, so our task is taking this image as an input, and then we generate the sequence of uh, word tokens, which is a correct sentence describing the scene. And um, for that, we have a training data set, usually, for uh, a paired data set which is uh, image or video and its correct text description. So we can use this to guide the model to output the correct description of that uh, image. It can be either a short phrase or a full sentence or even longer than that, like a paragraph with multiple sentences. So yeah, as I told, we are going to cover four methods, three of them for the image captioning and the last one for the video captioning. And actually, we have seen many of these already. Uh, so we are going to just apply what we have learned to um, this task. And uh, it will be not very challenging for you to understand if you are following the content so far. So image captioning. The first method is the LRCN. So we have seen this model in lecture 14, as far as I remember. So after we learned about the LSTM, the RNNs, and then uh, we introduced this model as the first example of RNN-based video modeling. And there, I actually uh, had this slide, exactly the same slides. And I mentioned that uh, this model was applied to image video captioning, and it will be covered in this course. And that is now. So uh, just recall that this model is uh, using some CNNs to extract the features from uh, each frames in the video. And then those features are fed into an LSTM. And then for each of them, we output uh, the cl uh, classification of that uh, frame, actually the frames so far. And then we take the average to uh, get the finer uh, classification. So that was the image of the video classification model using the LRCN uh, last time. So now we're going to see how they actually apply this model to image captioning. So it's very uh, similar. So they adopted multi-layer LSTM instead of single one, uh, single layer. And except for that, that's actually uh, very intuitive. So taking a sequence of frames, uh, similar to their image classification model, they uh, feed it into a CNN model to extract the feature. That is the input uh, vector to this LSTM. Uh, and then uh, LSTM is basically the sequence to sequence model. So they take the, uh, the uh, sorry, this is not sequence to sequence, but it's basically just LSTM. So it takes the, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, we can say that, 
uh, yeah, this can be seen as a sequence to sequence actually, because the input is also sequence and the output is also sequence. But uh, um, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, okay, forget about that. Uh, um, so this um, when we deal with only the image, this is not a sequence to sequence, but it's a one to n mapping. So give uh, just one single image is given here. Uh, I was just confused about the video classification, video captioning, but this is image captioning. So we have just a single input image and we take the uh, CNN models to extract these features. And then the same feature is applied to every step. And the only sequence we have here is the output, which is the sentence or the sequence of word tokens. So here we start with uh, some uh, special token indicating the start of the sentence. And that is given as an input. And uh, there are two options with this model, actually. So these visual features can be either used as an input to the very first LSTM layer for everyone, for every step, or it uh, just applies that uh, to uh, as, as a hidden um, input, uh, hidden state. The, uh, it's concatenated with the hidden state of the LSTM model at the very last layer. So they. Uh, introduce these two different models. Either is fine because uh, basically it's just philosophically what this means is the LSTM model at each step takes two inputs. One is the visual signal from the CNN based vector. And the other is the word tokens which was uh, generated at the previous step. So those two are given in this model at the very beginning together. And in this model, only uh, the word token is given, uh, like other uh, LSTM, just uh, regular LSTM models. And this visual signal is concatenated with the uh, hidden layers at the end. So that's just the difference. But um, they basically take the visual signal and the previous word token, uh, and then output the next token based on those two. So that's the LRCN model for image captioning. OK. That's done. And uh, let's move on to the second model, which we are going to use noise contrastive estimator. So we actually have seen this model uh, as well before. Uh, so I actually just brought uh, the same slides from lecture 15 uh, from the metric learning part. So we have M training examples. And our goal was. Uh, learning the probability distribution that we uh, extracted these uh, data examples. So we don't know what is this PM, but our goal is estimating uh, that based on this uh, data samples. And uh, for that, they actually um, changed the problem from to, uh, the softmax based uh, model to uh, binary classification model such, such that uh, introducing the, the fake probability distribution PN. And the task was uh, binary classifying um, from the mixed distribution of the X and Y samples and uh, uh, figure out which sample is coming from this actual probability PM or which one is coming from the fake distribution, which is PN. Uh, usually they use the uh, this random distribution for this PN. So uh, just review that material if you're not familiar with this. We're going to just directly apply this idea to uh, image captioning. So here, the x1 to xm are the data samples. And as I told, uh, in our image captioning data sets, we have a pair of an image and its correct description in sentence, right? So those pairs are observed samples. So each one of these x1 to xm are actually a pair of an image and its uh, description sentence. So these are uh, the positive examples. And what about the fake examples? So they create some random distribution by uh, taking some caption which is not aligned to the target image. So for image one, for example, we take any caption other than C1. And for I2, we take any caption other than C2. In that way, we can create just uh, same size of uh, data set. Uh, each, uh, actually, it doesn't necessarily be the same size. I want to IN, so it can be different, which means we can subsample some images or 
some same images can be reused from this data set. And uh, the captions are also just randomly chosen. Uh, so these pairs are no longer aligned to each other. So that's fake distribution, just any image and any sentence, which are not related to each other. And then we call this as positive pairs, and we call this negative pairs. And then we just apply this NCE framework directly. And then we can solve the problem by uh, maximizing the probability of observing these actual uh, pairs than this one. So, so uh, yeah, here this was the, our uh, summary about the NCE. So we are not going to repeat all the details of these mathematical things, uh, formulas in uh, lecture 15. So please review that. Uh, so our summary was this. We uh, actually, uh, what we actually do here is just sampling some fake examples, uh, just randomly creating in this case, and then maximizing the score of the real examples and minimizing the score of the fake ones. That's what we exactly do with this model. So that uh, this one actually uh, exactly describes it. So this is our logistic regression classifier. And uh, for actual examples, which is I and C are uh, the pairs, the positive pairs, for all the M examples, we optimize, we maximize its uh, likelihood. And for these fake samples, we would like to minimize that as much as possible. That's basically the uh, contrastive learning we are doing with this uh, setting. So yeah, in, that's it. And uh, this is the result by the, uh, the authors in the paper. So it seems they tried uh, to include this contrastive learning into, uh, uh, upon some uh, pre-existing models. And then they uh, actually cherry pick some examples that they can do better specifically. So yeah. For example, this one, a row of bots on a river near a river, which is uh, correct. But uh, they uh, actually added, uh, this model actually output a dot, which is more specific about uh, these boats or a bathroom with a toilet and a sink, which is a generally uh, correct description. But uh, in their model using this co uh, contrastive learning, actually this one was able to output the red, which is the color of this uh, room and the wall. So something like that, they applied this NCE models for image captioning and they got uh, slightly better results than uh, the previous one. Okay, and more uh, recent model, which is more widely used uh, in research community was this one, show, attend, and tear. So you can uh, guess that this model is actually using some attention-based approach uh, based on this term, actually that's correct. So uh, this part actually shows it's, uh, um, how it actually works. So um, given an image, we would like to output a sequence of word describing the scene. Uh, that's the, the definition of this task, uh, uh, image captioning. And uh, they actually use the RNN-based attention model to achieve that. So let's see how that works. So the name indicates that show, which is the Im input image is given to the model, which is show, and then attend. Uh, they apply the attention mechanism, especially uh, within the, the image. Uh, we have seen actually one example of doing that in, in the previous lecture. We're going to see another example of uh, special attention here. And then tear, which means they output uh, word uh, one by one uh, by the RNN. So uh, let's see how it actually works. So uh, this is the example of temporal attention we've learned in lecture cert, uh, 14. 13 or 14 in the RNN-based models. So starting from some uh, um, initial hidden states, uh, it takes the inputs one by one, and then it is encoded in the last hidden states. That's the encoder of the RNN. And then each of these hidden states in the middle are used to uh, used in the decoder when we decide to uh, decide what would be the output and how we are going to update the hidden states. So there, given the current hidden states in the output, uh, in the decoder, we use the similarity between that state and all the hidden states in the intermediate hidden states 
and use those similarity to apply the weighted sum. Uh, and then that is used as a part of the decoder hidden states. That was the main idea of using the tension in the temporal setting uh, like this in the sequence to sequence model. So uh, in, in this uh, captioning task, we are going to use the uh, temporal uh, tension model, so which is similar to this, but slightly different. So yeah, this part is encoder and this part is the decoder. And now we are going to change the encoder part to attend to the special attention. So let's see. So given this image, uh, we take the CNN to encode this into uh, some two dimensional space, which is uh, W times T, H times D. So D is the, the dimension of each of these vectors. And uh, let's define W times H as R. So it's the, that's all the number of uh, uh, the number of all these uh, embeddings uh, the, in, in the patches, the, the special uh, embeddings within this image. And we are going to call that as uh, A0 to AR. Actually, it should be L minus 1 because we are starting from 0. And uh, we take its average to encode this entire image as um, a single vector. So that's the initial hidden state of the decoder because we don't know where to actually uh, look at at the very beginning. So we just take the, its average. And then similar to what we've done in uh, the previous uh, temporal tension, we compute the similarity between the current hidden state, which is the query to the, all the keys, which are the candidate of the embedding, or the, the attention. So uh, compute similarity between this uh, current hidden state, the query, and one key here. And then we are going to get uh, some uh, uh, similarity or uh, relevance score, and uh, one for each of these four candidates. And then we take the attention score uh, using the softmax function. And then we are going to sum weighted sum, uh, all of these uh, candidates proportional to the weights, uh, which is computed as the similarity between the current hidden states and its the candidate vectors. So now these are used as a value, again, uh, when we combine these as the weighted sum. And that is called a context vector in this model. And we call that as Z, uh, because this one will be used as uh, the part of the next hidden state, we are going to use, uh, name this as Z1 instead of Z0. So the hidden state, uh, this one uh, is used as a hidden state for the next term. And it takes uh, the input, which is the last word it was uh, producing. So now this is the, just uh, uh, some special token indicating the start of the, the sentence. And using this uh, hidden states, they uh, output some word. And then the next step, based on this new hidden states, we also, uh, again attend uh, on this, uh, the uh, visual embeddings for uh, corresponding to each part within the image. And we're doing the exact the same thing, compute the similarity and multiply those similarity scores to these vectors, which are the uh, values, not key this time. And then they are weighted summed and it creates the next context vector, which is Z2. And that is used as a hidden states and uh, taking the previous output Y1 to produce Y2, which is the next token to output. It just repeats this until we encounter the uh, special token indicating the, the end of the sentence. So that uh, is the captioned outputs. And uh, we have the ground truth uh, description of this image in our uh, training data set. So we uh, actually train this model by forcing uh, this description to be that description of, uh, in the data set. And then we hope that this model can be generalized to some unseen new images and uh, actually can be used to describe what it is. So that's basically the uh, model. So yeah, this is another example of the spatial attention. So we have seen in lecture 14, uh, another example of the spatial attention for image classification. Now we are going to use this spatial attention for image captioning, but it, it, this is very similar to what we've seen before, right? 
So now uh, I hope you understand better about how this attention uh, actually works. And again, I would like to uh, emphasize again uh, that understanding this, uh, how the attention is applied in the model is figuring out what are the keys, uh, queries, keys, and values, and how they combine those to attention values. So it is really important to figure out what are these for this model. So yeah, if, uh, if you're looking at this video, just stop here and try to answer each of these, and then uh, check if that's correct. Uh, OK. So let's check. Um, so what is the query here? When you design the uh, in this model, what is the query? Uh, query is the decoder LSTM hidden state. So current hidden state in the decoder. So we uh, this is used as a, uh, um, how should I say? It's uh, the, um, it's kind of, uh, it's considered kind of origin that you're going to compute the similarity uh, to all other candidates. So it will be used as a query, so current hidden states. And given the current hidden states, what you are going to compare the similarity is uh, all the spatial region in, uh, features in the image. So those attention vectors, uh, local con features, uh, which is denoted as A0 to AL minus one, uh, so these are used as key as well as as values. So, so um, you com uh, co uh, you compute the similarity between this hi, the current hidden states of the decoder, and all of these annotation vectors, in, uh, which is the local con features, uh, and then it will produce uh, the scores, the similarity scores, and then those are used as a weights when you combine these uh, annotation vectors itself, again, uh, as value at that time. So in this model, the key and value are the same. We have seen that uh, transformer models use different keys and values. But uh, in this model, they use the same uh, vectors for both key and value. And then attention value is that the results of the weighted average of those annotation vectors. Uh, this is almost all, always the same. The weight is the relevant score between this key and this query or the local count feature or, uh, and this uh, current hidden states. So it, at high level, we can summarize this like this. Given the current hidden state, what does that mean? We are uh, outputting each word tokens at each step. And uh, at current step, for example, a bird is, uh, that was the previous word tokens we have already produced. And then what would be something? something like flying, then uh, as a human, we can understand that what would be the next token. Uh, it may be describing uh, the bird or its action, probably, right? Because the verb was is, and then what we are going to expecting. Uh, so the model will be able to learn that as well. So the current hidden states should uh, include some in, uh, clue like that. Uh, we are describing this bird and uh, because of that verb is, then uh, we're going to talk about its current status or its current action or something like that. And then as a human, we can actually uh, decide where to look at within the image. We have to find the bird and then uh, we will observe what's, what it's doing. So uh, given this hidden states and uh, this uh, given all the candidates, which is the local count features, which part we have, uh, have to attend, uh, that is determined by the similarity. So this is the mathematical uh, representation of our model. So given uh, the previous output, it's embedded by this embedding layer. So this is just some word embedding. And HT is the uh, current hidden states. And ZT is uh, our uh, context vector, which is determined by the weighted sum of those candidates or the key, uh, values of the uh, the con features. So these two are used as the representation of the current hidden states or the current decoder states. And these LH and LZ are the model parameters. So we uh, linearly multiply these two. And then uh, this is also uh, linearly multiplied with another model parameter. And then we take the exponential. And then that is proportional to the distribution of the outputs. So uh, 
So yeah, the next world token is based on these factors. So the uh, previous token it outputs, and uh, the current hidden states and the current context vector. So here's an example. So given this image, the uh, the sentence it outputs is like this: a bird flying over a body of water, and uh, just period, which is the end of the sentence, and we looked at uh, which part this uh, model is actually looking at. So for example, when it is says about bird, then where well, it starts with all, oh, and then actually it's uh, just looking at all the places. And then uh, when it outputs bird, then uh, because of the all, oh, it should talk about some object within the image and there's just one. So they actually look at this part and it outputs bird because it looks like bird and it knows from its con features. And flying, then it's also related to its action. So it uh, actually look at this bird and then over. So it look at uh, a wider area because it's uh, the bird is doing something. So, uh, so far it outputs like a bird flying and then what? Uh, over uh, on some water. So it uh, actually look at a uh, wider area uh, around this bird, something like that. So it actually looks at the, uh, the right region uh, when you output each token one by one. And the soft attention uh, means uh, the attention map can be uh, uh, continuous uh, from zero to one. So each of these pixels can be uh, attended strongly or weakly. So that is called soft. So it's black, then it's uh, not attended at that point. It's white, and then it's uh, attended very strongly. Some gray between them, uh, it's somewhat so-so. Uh, uh, they just slightly attend it. The hard attention means uh, it needs to figure out actually where to look at, just like human eyes. We just look at some particular points. So uh, this is usually the uh, most likely, uh, most important part when we uh, output some word. Uh, so when we output a bird, for example, it actually choose here instead of here and uh, flying it was kind of wrong so well you can see that the soft attention might make more sense for this particular example but um, yeah sometimes it may be useful to uh, apply the hard attention so we're not going to uh, detail the uh, pros and cons between these two but I just want want you to know uh, what's the difference the uh, hard attention you actually choose just a single point to look at so here's an example, uh, and uh, for this given image, the model output this uh, sentence, and the, on the right side, it uh, shows where it's actually attending when it uh, outputs that uh, the particular word in the sentence, which is the underlined. So frisbee, uh, actually, it was looking at the frisbee, which is great, and this one, uh, yeah, dog is actually uh, not shown entirely. But interestingly, actually, it was uh, looking at that part. And OK, this is just a dog. That's smart, right? Uh, because we just see only one eye and its nose. and But it still figures out it's a dog. Yeah, something like that. So uh, this, all of these examples are probably cherry picked, but uh, quite interesting to see. And, and especially in the last example, uh, it's talking about the giraffe in the forest, but when it talks about trees, which is the background, it actually successfully uh, looking at the, um, the that background, even though this graph is the main object in this image. And these are uh, interesting mistakes. So uh, for this given image, the output uh, text was like this, a large white bird standing in a forest. Actually, there are uh, two graphs, but uh, they made a mistake. It's uh, there's a bird, so we actually tried to see where it was attending to see its mistake. And actually, they were looking at this uh, two graphs, uh, which looked like uh, birds uh, just because of their formation. Or um, in this uh, lady's clothes, they, uh, this mother uh, output clock uh, by attending the mark in in the clothes, which is. Some, somehow look like a clothes. Or uh, interestingly, uh, another interesting example was this one. So yeah, the, the man is talking on his cell phone and uh, actually it attends the sandwich that he was eating, but 
uh, when you just look at this part, it might look like a uh, cell phone. Uh, it's weird, but it's kind of brilliant mistake, I would say. OK, so so far, we talked about the image captioning. We have uh, covered three models, LRCN, and the NCE-based model, and the show attend tell model. And now we're going to just briefly talk about the video captioning model based on uh, another attention model. So um, they apply the temporal attention for video captioning uh, in a, just a slight, uh, just a straightforward way. So given a video uh, like this, a sequence of frames, they applied a deep 3D CNN models to encode each of those samples. So this is encoded as a vector V1, this is V2, and this is Vn. So now they have a sequence of vectors in the input. And then uh, they apply some LSTM-based attention model to decode it, um, uh, generating a sequence. So here, uh, this is kind of a sequence-to-sequence -sequence model because they need to um, uh, encode the semantics of the entire video and then in a, into a single vector unless they use attention and then use that uh, video level vector to uh, generate the output se uh, uh, sentence because the number of frames in the video, which is the input, and the number of tokens or the words in the output sentence may not, uh, may, may not be the same, right? So this is uh, a good example of the sequence to sequence model. So um, they actually apply the attention-based model. So now they use uh, all of these vectors when we uh, output uh, each word. So the model attends all of these candidate uh, vectors uh, to where to look at temporally. And then it chooses the next words by uh, LSTM based model. So let's see. Given this video, they uh, encode these into a uh, vector v1, v2, v3 using some convnet. And then they take the average of these uh, vectors, similarly to uh, the show attend tell model using the spatial attention, they also took the average of those con features within the image. Uh, in this one, they do the same thing, but temporally. So each of these frames are uh, represented as a single vector and they are averaged to uh, be the decoder hidden state at the very first step. And then we compute similarity between the current hidden states which is query. Now you should be familiar with this. And uh, compute the similarity against all the candidates to be attended, which is key here, right? So this is query, and these are the keys. And compute similarities, then we have the score, similarity scores, uh, given the current hidden state. And then we take the softmax to normalize them. And we use those attention coefficients to combine these vectors representing each frame now as a value, not as a key here, but they use the same vector for that. So they are weighted summed to uh, be attention value, A0. And then uh, we use both the current hidden states and these atten attention value uh, together to update the hidden states and I'll put the first word. And the same thing, uh, happens again uh, based on the current hidden state, which is H1 now, to compute the similarity. And based on that, uh, the, it computes the weighted sum of these vectors based on this similarity. And then Y1, the previous output token, is used as an input to this model. And then uh, the hidden state is updated based on uh, now it should be A1 instead of A0, because uh, we use the H1 as its input. So uh, the A1 as H1 are used as the hidden states. And taking this Y1 as input, it produces Y2 and continues like that until they encounter the, the period, the end of the sentence signal. Right. So we have seen a lot of examples of using the attentions, both spatially and temporally. So you should be familiar with these now. Uh, please read their own uh, original papers and uh, try to understand the all the nitty gritties uh, are happening within this model to understand uh, uh, exactly what's happening. So uh, again, uh, it's always important to figure out what are the keys, values, and queries. So again, uh, please stop and pause here and 
do this exercise and check your answer. So let's see. For the queries, uh, it is the decoder LSTM hidden states at the current uh, step, i. So the current decoder hidden state is the query. We are going to compare uh, against all the candidates uh, to, be, to be combined or to be attended uh, with this one. So that is query. And what are the keys? Those candidates, right? Those uh, candidate vectors to become, uh, uh, candidate vectors to be combined, but those uh, combined, uh, those uh, vectors to be combined are called as value. And the key is the one actually we use to compute the similarity between these LSTM hidden states, the query. But in this model, they use the same vectors, which is the frame level features from uh, the very first uh, feature, uh, uh, very first frame to the very uh, last uh, frame. So the CNN embeddings, which is the frame level vector that is used as a key as well as, as a value. And then attention value is weighted average of those frame level features. And weights are the similarity between each of these vectors and uh, the LSTM hidden state, current hidden states. So that's the summary of this attention model for this uh, uh, temporary attention video captioning model. Yeah, so this is the end of this lecture, uh, relatively shorter. So uh, yeah, please review this material and uh, I strongly recommend you to read these four papers uh, to understand how it actually applies these ideas into image captioning and video captioning task. In the next lecture, we are going to start generative model, which is the last topic of our course, uh, which will be fun and slightly more challenging. So let's see. Thanks, thanks for your attention.